YouTube, hi, hello, we're back in business. Sorry I haven't uploaded or streamed the last two days. Been feeling a little bit sick, but I'm trying to muscle through one today to get you guys a video that you've been asking for a lot in the comments. Seems like still a lot of you guys have been unable to get to round 100, so what I'm gonna do today is go over the best way to get to round 100 in zombies. And then maybe some specific tips on D-Machina or Firebase Z, depending on which one you want to try. So before we jump into the game, like always, I'm going to let you guys know what you should and can take in just to make it easier for you playing to around 100. First of all are the classes, and I would highly suggest taking the Street Sweeper or the Howard. Both of these shotguns are by far the strongest weapons in zombies right now, especially if you're trying to go for high rounds. Either way, the Howard's going to be like a ray gun. It'll still one-shot zombies. So again, I run the same attachments on both shotguns. It's going to be the Duck Build Choke, the Damage Barrel. We're not going to take the Armor Damage Barrel just because added damage buff that we're going to get as we increase in rounds and as it scales with some of the other things we take can be utilized a lot better than the armor damage barrel so take the last one the task force barrel the amber sighting point just because it's a hit fire accuracy and a flashlight for extra salvage the biggest magazine we can 18 round drum and the marathon stock same thing on the Howard, tuck build choke, task horse barrel, ember sighting point, the eight round tube, and then the uh, marathon pad. Now, you guys need to be doing this on your shotguns just because in any game of zombies, if you're playing with your friends, if you're trying to go for high rounds, shotguns are just the best way to go. Come in here to your skills and on the weapon classes, level the shotgun all the way up to tier five. That way at tiers three, four, and five, we can increase armor penetration by 10%. Close quarters and critical bonus damage are both going to go up to 25% after we do this. Now, in my opinion, the shotguns do enough damage to where you don't necessarily need Ring of Fire. And if you're moving around, if you're training, you might not be able to stay in the same exact location in Ring of Fire. I genuinely think taking Frenzied Guard is your best way to get to around 100 if you're struggling to do so. It's safe, it's effective. Again, when you have armor, when you activate it, it repairs your armor to full. Enemies that you kill repair your armor by 10%. Normal enemies explode after hitting you. Also have this for 15 seconds long. It's a long time to have a field upgrade up, especially when normal enemies are slowed to a walk speed while active alternatively you guys could take ether shroud tier 5 the zombies will run away from you and things like that i like taking frenzy guard just because the zombies stay in place they don't move it gives me time to kill the elites if i need to and also it's just like having ether shroud if i'm about to go down or if i'm being hit you can just pop this and all the zombies will walk and nothing that hits you will do any damage to you so now frenzy guard is one of the longest cooldowns as far as field upgrades go you do need 60 kills so importantly we want to come in here and at least have your speed cola to tier 2 because that recharges your field upgrades 20% faster. That means you need 20% less kills to get frenzied guard, etc. Also, just another good way to stay alive is make sure your jug's leveled up. Obviously, you're going to have increased maximum health. Your armor durability is going to go up as well as instead of getting down on a lethal hit, armor is depleted and health is reduced to one. So kind of like a last ditch effort there. If you guys feel like you struggle once you get to right around round 60 when every zombie is a super sprinter and they're very fast, you have a hard time training, level up your stamina up just so you're always sprinting. You increase backpedal speed so once you're shooting at waves, things like that. And you also have no sprint speed fall off so you guys can start sprinting and it won't go away. Your stamina up will stay on 24-7. You guys might not have the crystals for all these things but they really are super beneficial especially going for high rounds like elemental pop leveling this up to level five once you reload it releases a discharge that damages and stuns nearby normal enemies and the less ammo you have in your magazine the harder that effect is so super good if you're again getting stuck having problems in those higher rounds and then leveling up dead shots always a must it just gives you so much added damage that you really should try and get this one as well other than that we are going to be still taking dead wire tier five this one's utilized best when training obviously so it's what we're going to take just because on the stun every 30 seconds arcs of electricity jump and while you're training those electricity arcs are going to be able to kill the most amount of zombies that they can because you have so many zombies in your wave so it's just the obvious choice not to mention you do more damage versus megatons on d-machina with dead wire so this is going to be one of the best tips i can give you guys once you start in the game bring both of your shotgun classes or just two classes have your ring of fire on one and then your frenzy guard on the other and this is why once you take a shot here and you can no longer switch classes i'm gonna have frenzy guard on my main class when you guys are in solo games it'll just switch down there at the bottom you don't have to respawn in order to get that the reason we're gonna do that is once we end round two right here this is when we're gonna head up to the top in penthouse just to get through our early rounds as fast as possible so once we get to the top we're gonna play here until round six that's when we're going to save a zombie now once we get pack a punch and get our perks and everything like that we're pretty much going to stay here with our ring of fire as long as we possibly can okay this is going to be a little different for everybody obviously you know it comes down to skill level just how comfortable you are playing against zombies and you know just under pressure once the zombies start running at you if you guys are getting your double points and things like that try and utilize them the best you can grab your nukes at the end of rounds stuff like that i'm trying to crunch as much points as you guys possibly can to 
pack a punch as soon as possible. So try not to miss out on any of the bonus points you guys can. There we go. Here's our last zombie. Double points just ended. So now we're just going to go get that power on. Stop at your perk machines and grab your loose change. That's 100 points at all of them. I come down here. I like stopping at the armor guy, leveling up the tier of my weapon, and then putting the machine part in just to pack a punch. Now, with shotguns, before I pack a punch, I also like grabbing speed cola. The reason we grab this is because it's going to help us get our field upgrade back. So, uh, Ring of Fire will come back 20% faster, and it also gives us better reload speed while we have shotguns, you know. So, I like to grab that first, and then go into the Coffin Easter egg to get our free Juggernaut perk, so you guys don't have to spend points on it. The reason I also like to grab Speed Cola first is now that we're getting Jug, um, it's our it's going to be our second perk. So, buying Speed Cola after we did this, the perk would have been more expensive, so... Go. This will take us into our first elite round. Now, instead of pack a punching, I'm going to immediately get dead wired just so when the megaton spawns, we can get rid of him as fast as we can. Because even though we're playing around 100, we don't want it to take five hours. We want to try and do it in three or four. If this is your guys' first time doing it, try and get everything done as fast as you can. You want to get through those rounds quick. I like to stay down here just for this round until we have enough money to pack a punch. And then we'll head back up to the penthouse. But you guys will see the shotgun will do plenty of damage even when it's not pack a punched at green tier and with dead wire. Just like that, that easy. Now we're just trying to get up to our 5,000 points to pack a punch, and then we're gonna head up to Penthouse. That's gonna give us our 5,000. So we'll pack. I'm also gonna get my weapon tier to blue. After you kill the Megaton, you'll have enough scrap to do that if you take a flashlight. Should only be a couple more zombies in the round. You guys can just wrap it up there. Sprint our butt cheeks back to penthouse to force spawn all the zombies for next round up there Kind of camp the windows here again We're trying to get rid of these zombies fast, right? So just let them spawn kill the ones on the walkway when they show up But kill these guys before they can even crawl up Remember we're trying to get this done quick too So it's not like camos we can grab our nukes if we want now and that round get into the next one Now I do just want to say if you're an experienced zombies player take the street sweeper with ring of fire You guys can sit in penthouse pretty much the entirety of the game but this game is going to be for those who are kind of struggling with getting to round 100 who might not be able to sit in penthouse the whole time. That's the reason we're going to take Frenzied Guard and use Deadwire to train with. I think these are our last zombies here. So these last two zombies, then you guys will see my blue scrap is going to jump all the way up to 460. Now, I like waiting until round 15 to go pack a punch again or anything like that. I have 27,000 points, you guys will see. Because 10 rounds after we get the power on is when our perk machine is going to spawn. The Wonder Fizz will be here. So we can grab our dead shot. We can grab our, you know, elemental pop or whatever perks we need for while we're up here. And then all we've got to do this round is get up to that 500 blue scrap, which we just grabbed our last one there. The reason I like to wait is because once you jump off here, now the tunnels will be there. So we can quickly get down to the bottom without wasting a bunch of time running around. So there we are. We're going to hit tier purple. Pack a punch for our second time. And we're just going to return up top, rinse and repeat, do exactly what we've been doing. So I'm almost at round 30, round 26 here. I still haven't used my ring of fire one time. Um, if you guys feel like you're struggling with dead shot as far as hitting the zombies with your shotgun and you play on controller, uh, what you guys can kind of do is just strafe, you know, strafe back and forth. There's no need to aim down sight all the time, but if you are, just shoot really fast. Don't let your gun aim in all the way, because then your shotgun will miss some shots sometimes. So yeah, just really quick. Just barely tap your aim, and if you're playing on control, it'll kind of lock the next, you know, the next enemy. Again, I mean, as you guys can see, you, you don't need ring of fire. The shotgun is just disgusting, so. Pack a punch it to the third tier as soon as you guys can. And then by the time we hit round 30 here, we'll beat a thousand blue scrap for sure. So we're going to be able to trade our shotgun to tier orange, the final tier, and we'll be doing the most damage that we can for the remainder of the game. Let's say it's round 30. You guys have kind of hit your limit for what you're able to play up top. Okay. So now at this point is when I would grab stamina up, head down when you guys have the points, go to orange tier, and then the remainder of your game can kind of be played in spawn area. Try and keep the store closed. To open that up just so zombies aren't spawning behind you when you're training but then realistically the ability for the howler to one shot will carry you through the remainder of your rounds and dead wire itself will zap entire waves of zombies and it will do that no matter what round you're on or how high you go whenever you guys get to the point in the game where you want to start training just come back over here change it to frenzied guard so my best tip for training i can give you guys once you get into higher rounds is at the beginning and in the middle of rounds and stuff like that when zombies are kind of spawning from everywhere and coming at you just focus on your movement, focus on your pathing and where you're going. All you're trying to do is let all the zombies spawn in until they've reached their limit. The maximum the map will let you have in at once. Once that's happened, then you guys can turn around, kill that wave in full, 
and then you're just going to do the same thing. The zombies are going to start spawning in randomly again. You're just going to get them all gathered, kill the entire wave, rinse and repeat that process. You guys are probably going down a lot when you feel like you need to turn around and always be shooting zombies like this, right? There's no need to just always be stopping every two seconds to turn and shoot. Just let them all get spawned in. You won't go down from behind. This round's pretty crazy. We have a megaton. We have dogs jumping across the map hitting us like that. So just to show you guys what you can do with Frenzy Guard, right? Pop your Frenzy Guard. All those zombies are going to walk, which will give you some time to get the elite killed um, if you need to. Also, the normal zombies will hit you. You'll only take damage to your armor, which they will all explode, and you can get kills on them while they're standing there as well. Remember, you guys have 15 seconds, which is plenty of time to kill the elites and get what you need done, or just get out of the way if you're about to go down. Something I would highly suggest doing as well is while you guys are training, try and get rid of the dogs like I just did. The dogs are seriously so overpowered. That it doesn't sound like they're getting fixed anytime soon, but they'll do half your HP in later rounds just by jumping across the map at you. So point them out in the wave, clear the dogs if you guys can, you'll have an easy time. And really from this point on, that's the exact thing you're gonna follow. Once you guys get into round 50, 60, the zombies are gonna get faster, but you have stamina up and if you have it tier five, you're always gonna be zooming. So it doesn't necessarily matter. Just let all of the zombies spawn in until the map maxes them out. Don't try and kill zombies while you're running around and stuff like this, that's when you'll go down. Don't forget, if you get stuck in a corner, pop your frenzy guard. The normal zombies that hit you will die. It'll give you a second to back up. You can still keep training. You have plenty of time to regather, regroup, and keep going. The nice thing about frenzy guard compared to ether shroud is the cast time on ether shroud is a little bit longer because it has to vault you and get you into the ether shroud. On frenzy guard, it just activates right away. So. You guys can also kind of remember if you have Tombstone Tier 5 or Quick Revive Tier 5. On Quick Revive Tier 5, if you guys go down and you can kill a zombie, it'll count like a self-revive. You guys can get yourself back up, which helps you in later rounds. Again, we all tend to be different players and go down to different things, so just pay attention to the way you play, where you're struggling, and remember what skills in the game, what perks and things like that can help you with your specific problem if you're having a hard time getting to round 100. So just remember, training isn't necessary, but if you guys feel like you're struggling, Always train when in pain. I'm gonna make that a saying, I swear I'm going to. But if you feel like you can handle higher round zombies, definitely give the Street Sweeper a shot and stay up in Penthouse. Remember, when it's Pack-A-Punched, you guys can reload five bullets at a time. It does pretty close to equal amounts of damage, but it'll carry you up in a spot like that. So the fire rate and just being able to kind of spam your shots and hold down your trigger, sitting up in Penthouse with a Street Sweeper is very viable as well. But again, if you're struggling, train with the things that I just showed you guys and you'll have no problem getting around 100 at all. Now, I do just want to talk about Firebase Z. My frames are starting to drop, so I'm not going to jump into the game because it's probably going to look like butt cheeks. Using the Colonel's Office the same way as I just did in Penthouse, you guys can follow the same exact pattern and then train on Helipad in the middle of the map if you want to. Firebase Z is definitely going to be the more difficult map to get through because the elite spawns as well as the assault waves. If you're looking for a challenge, it's super fun to do. A couple pro tips for that map. Once you guys are fully pack-a-punched and have everything that you need, you can let the assault waves win on each three reactor sites and then the assault waves will stop coming. So if you plan on training on a helipad until round 100 on Firebase Z, once you've pack-a-punched your third time, and got in your ammo mod, just let these soul waves win. Turn the power back on. You will lose power at your armor stations and perk machines inside of the map. But once you guys go back to the village, you can still use the Wonder Fizz and armor station there. If you want to level up your weapons, buy more armor, get more perks if you go down, things like that. That is my best advice for skipping the assault and order waves and playing to round 100 on FireBC. Overall mechanics of the game and what we're taking into the game doesn't change at all. It's the way we play just a little bit because the map's different, obviously. But you guys have asked this question a lot on how to get around 100. If you guys still don't have the calling card, I hope you guys can take away something in this video that's going to help you get around 100 if you've been struggling with it. I really would suggest doing this on solo if you're just having a hard time the more people you get in your lobbies the more zombies the more difficult it is just trying to manage all those things can be hard so if you haven't done it and you're trying to play zombies for a couple hours just give what i told you a shot i promise it'll get you there that's gonna be the end of today's video so just want to say thanks again if you stayed to the end like the video if it helped you out subscribe because if you haven't yet what are you doing like 60 percent of you guys aren't and we're almost at 60,000 subscribers up on the end of our first three months on youtube so stick around for the ride i hope you do because there's gonna be a lot more coming mid-season update isn't far away as well as season three and next year's call of duty just got announced and you can bet your ass i'm gonna be here for it but thank you guys i love you have a kick-ass rest of your days sleep well if you're just ending it i'll see you guys in the next video or the live stream peace out